welcome to God's house. Yes. Have you come to worship? Yes. Well, you've got to worship real hard because the congregation is slim. But God said, even if one person comes to worship me, my Holy Spirit will be here in the midst. So God's here. He never lies. So we've got Brother Tommy going to speak to us tonight. And I, I'm going to just ask Tommy to start making your way up here. So we won't be hindered. <coughs> All right, all right. Amen. Trying to break your habits. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're here to worship, so let's pray. Father, God, there's so many, many, many things in the world that we do not understand. And God, I think your word will tell us you didn't create us to understand everything. You just created us to believe everything that you have written in your word, the Holy Bible. And God, sometimes the devil stirs in a way that we get caught up in this or that or maybe or I think until we forget that you Holy Spirit are the one that's here to teach us how to worship, how to bring blessings to pour out on us. And we just want to thank you, bless Tommy, as he comes to speak. I pray for your anointing, your quickening Holy Spirit to speak through him. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Just want to remind y'all about Sunday. Don't forget, Covered Dish, we're having a luncheon immediately following the morning service to honor our seniors. If any of you are willing and able, we need help setting up the tables down at the social hall. Um, they are coming to decorate tomorrow, um, and there is nothing set up. And unfortunately, all of our strong young men that are in the youth group are all playing baseball, so we cannot rely on the youth this time to do it. So Chris and I are fixing to start working, but some of you who can come and please help us at the end, I would greatly appreciate it. Good evening. Good evening. A beautiful day in the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I just thank you once again for your love, your mercy, and your saving grace, dear God. I pray, Father God, as I get up here and humbly speak your words that I would speak nothing but the truth and that you would use me for your will be done in my life. Not mine, dear God. Not my words, but your words. I pray you would bless each one that's come out tonight, Father God. And I just pray that you would open their hearts, their minds, and their spirit to receive what you have for them. And I pray everything would be done in accordance to your word and not my word. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Well, tonight's not going to be an easy one for me, I can tell you. I've prayed about it and sought God's guidance. I've talked to some saints and tried to get their guidance. And I can tell you, I normally am not nervous. But this is one I'd really rather not have to give. Uh, I've got a piece of paper here that people say that me and Jimmy Brantley wrote and had something to do with. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, didn't come from us, didn't have nothing to do with us, we had nothing to do with it whatsoever. But I will show you the piece of paper that me and Jimmy Brantley wrote. And if you can find something on it, please tell me. I don't mind being accused of doing something because I'm not perfect. I have sinned. I have fallen short of the glory of God. And if there's anybody in here that hasn't done that, please stand up. I'll gladly let you take my place. But we have a, a tendency to crucify people without going to them and asking them did you say so and so? Did you do so and so? We have a tendency not to go to the brother that has wronged us or that we think has wronged us and talking to them and asking them. If I have a problem with Jimmy Brantley, I'll go to Jimmy Brantley. If you don't think so, ask him. It doesn't bother me. I want me and him to be on the same sheet of music. Bottom line, we are all children of God if we've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Are we not? We should all walk in the light of the Lord, should we not? So when we do things that we're not supposed to do, if we got the Holy Spirit living in us, He will convict us. And He will tell us. And we will ask forgiveness. And if we don't ask for forgiveness, then... Oh, shame on you. You're walking with the other guy. And we know who the other guy is. He's a liar. He's a thief. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you don't think he's alive and well, then you haven't been breathing very long. Every time that back door opens, he walks in the door with you. He's sitting on the pew with you. You have two options. You can allow him to control your life, or you can let Jesus. One or the two. You will either go to heaven, or you will go to hell. When Adam and Eve sinned, God gave them a free will. That's why they was allowed to. He gave you a free will. You always have two options. When that door opens, if it's the Word of the Lord, then you've chose the right option. If that door opens and it's Satan, you chose the wrong door. Do you think just because you say you're a Christian and you've been saved, that if you open the wrong door, that you're going to be okay? There's preachers that will tell you, once you get saved, you can do anything you want to. Say anything you want to. Act any way you want to. Tell as many lies as you want to tell. Cause as much trouble as you want to cause. And God will still let you go to heaven. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, that's a lie. And not only is that a lie, that lie will carry you straight to hell. <coughs> My uh, scripture tonight is going to be in Proverbs. I like Proverbs. I've been in Romans for a while, uh, but apparently the Lord don't want me to speak out of Romans, so He gave me this Scripture. Some of y'all can relate to it. Some of you will not like it, but I can tell you this. If it's in this, which is the King James Version of God's Holy Word, it's the truth. God said it. That settles it. Doesn't matter whether I agree or disagree. 
So everything I'm going to talk to you about tonight comes right out of here. So if you get offended, if you get mad, if you get upset and you don't like me, that's fine with me because God's got my back. I know who's got my back. But before I read Proverbs, let me go ahead and read this to you. Isaiah 54, 17. One of my favorite scriptures. Guarantee if you ever have a problem and Satan's on you and people telling lies about you and everything's just coming against you and you can't handle it, God give you a word. And this is what it says. No weapon that is formed against me it says thee in the King James Version, but you put me in there. Shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Do you believe that? Do you honestly believe that? As a Christian, we shouldn't be saying anything about our brothers and sisters, whether it's true or not. But we like, to gossip. Oh me, everybody does it. And if you're sitting in the, in the sound of my voice and you say you don't gossip, you might need to do a checkup. Because everybody talks about everybody. They always have. The Bible says they have. The Bible says they always will. But if you've got a problem with your brother, I don't care, or your sister, the Bible says you're supposed to go to them. You're not supposed to go to John down the road and tell him for him to go tell somebody else and when he tells it it changes just a little bit every time it gets told it gets worse doesn't get better always gets worse this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. That's straightforward, ain't it? Plain and simple. Somebody comes against you and you're a child of God, he'll take care of it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But not the way people act, are they? People act like, oh, it's, it's my job to take care of that. I'll handle that. I, I can't believe they said that about me. I can't believe they've done that. Well, I can tell you one thing. I know for a fact I haven't talked to anybody about anything that's been going on in this church. I haven't talked to a deacon. I haven't talked to anybody except for one time I called Brother Danny and talked to him about something somebody texted me. Because I thought it come from him. So I called him and asked him, did I not? His words to me was, no. I didn't say that. Now I have two options. I can believe what he said, that he didn't say that. Or I can believe he did say it and just think he's telling me a lie. As the pastor of this church, if I've got confidence enough in him to come to this church, I need to believe him, don't I? Does that mean everything that he does is right? Probably not. Am I the judge of him or you or anybody else in here? No, I'm not. Do I have a right to judge anybody else without first giving them an opportunity to defend themselves? No, I don't. He's the judge, not me. So... I'm going to read in Proverbs chapter 6. We're going to talk about the seven deadly sins. Seven deadly sins. It's pretty straightforward what God hates. And if you're in the midst of doing any of these, He hates it. Plain and simple. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These 16 things doeth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hand that sheds innocent blood, a heart that deceiveth wicked... 
brain just went dead. Inclinations, feet that be swift in running to mystery, a false witness that speaketh lies, he that sweareth discord among the brethren. Him that soweth discord among the brethren. Have you ever done that? Sow discord among the brothers? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever done anything that you feel like in your heart was wrong and didn't repent of it? If you did, you're wrong. And I can promise you, you may be saved and you may say, I'm going to heaven anyway. But if you do something contrary to God's Word, if you do something that you're not supposed to do, you will pay for that. Sins will be paid for. So, if you've done something, and you don't know whether or not you've got it under the blood of Jesus Christ, because He saved you, then you need a checkup. I can't save you. I can't pray you into heaven. <clears throat> I can't do nothing for you. All I can do is tell you what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many times have you come into church and you walked in, before you even got to church, already started complaining? If so-and-so speaks to me, I'm going to tell them off. I'm going to give them a mouthful if they say something to me. I can't believe so-and-so wore that to church. You ever done that? We all do it, don't we? Everybody's guilty of it. If, if you've got a brain and you allow Satan to get into that brain, he's going to cause you to say stuff like that. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't. It's not right for me to talk about Brother Bill Bunt behind his back. Well, what if you want to say something good about him? That's okay. But how many times have we talk behind somebody's back and it's not good? It's hearsay. It's so-and-so said that so-and-so done so-and-so. How many times have y'all heard that today? Anybody heard it today? I'm quite sure if you'll tell the truth, yes, you have. You have. That little telephone that people's got, we used to have a party line. Cell phones has got party lines beat. I guarantee you. That is the work of the devil. I don't care what nobody says. Facebook, TikTok, all that is the work of the devil. You get on there, sooner or later, you're going to look at something you ain't got no business looking at. Sooner or later, you're going to open your eyes and say, oh, Lord, I didn't mean to look at that. God, please forgive me. It's coming. Because Satan is so good at hiding things when you pull something up, they got something hid in there. Hidden secrets. Secrets is a devil's lie. Shouldn't be no secrets, especially in the house of God. We shouldn't hide nothing from nobody in this church. If we've got to sneak around and hide and tell lies and not tell the congregation of this church what's going on, something's wrong with our religion. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what we've got. We've got religion. We don't have Jesus Christ. Because if you've got Jesus Christ living in your soul, you're going to tell what you're supposed to tell. There's not going to be secrets. There's not going to be individuals. Because if they are, you're going to nip them in the bud just as soon as they happen. You're not going to let it fester and fester and fester until it explodes. Look around. This church ought to be full. In this wicked world we live in, this church ought to be full. And it's half empty. No, I'll take better than that. It's probably three-thirds of the way empty. Ain't hardly none on this side. Very few over there. and A good crowd right there in the middle. How many didn't come tonight because they didn't know who was preaching? Or who was speaking? That happens quite a bit, doesn't it? We shouldn't do that. Everybody has a right to know who's going to be behind this pulpit. 
Just because I'm standing behind the pulpit don't mean you want to hear what I got to say, does it? You might not trust what I got to say. You might think that he's not saved. I don't want to listen to him. He'll tell a lie. I don't like the way he dressed. He needs a haircut. He moves around too much up there. Don't want to hear him. But if you don't know he's speaking and you come, what do you do? Do you sit down back there and say, well, I'm not going to embarrass myself by getting up and leaving. I guess I'll hear what he's got to say. Is that what you do? We've had some people leave tonight. Got up and walked out. They didn't want to hear what I had to say. But it ain't what I got to say. It's what he says. And he says, we need to change our ways in this body of Christ. In this church. We need to re-look at the way we're living our lives and the way this church is run, and we need to change some things. Everybody said, well, that's the deacon's job. Deacons don't have no job. They have no authority over nobody or nothing in this church. Not the first thing. Well, then it's the steward board. They don't have no authority. Ask them. Ask them if they got any authority. You know who the ultimate authority is in this church or should be, but he's not? It's Jesus Christ. So we have fallen short as a church. And you notice I said we? I include myself in that. Oh, me. When I come in that back door back there, I should come in looking for a blessing, looking to see God, looking to hear His Word, looking to enrich my, enrich my life so that I can go out and tell this sick, perverted world we live in about a Savior. That's what I need to be doing. But I always come in that back door like that? No, I do not. And anybody that says they do, I'd have a hard time believing that. I really would. I really and truly would. When's the last time Please don't speak out loud. When's the last time you come to church expecting a blessing and to see the Holy Spirit of God move in the church? When's the last time you come to see that? When's the last time you come to church and seen it? Do you remember when the Holy Ghost really filled this church? from the back door to the front door or the side doors. We had a man come the other day. Him and his wife prayed and spoke, and they said they were demons in the church. You know what should have happened? The door should have been open. Somebody should have got the oil, and they should have been anointing this church. They should have been running the demons out of this church. I'm here to tell you, God's saying, if you don't get rid of the demons in this church, there won't be no church. This is supposed to be God's house. Do you come in looking for a blessing and realizing it's God's house? Do you? A very good question, ain't it? And if all of us would be honest with ourselves, there's times when we come in here, we're not looking for a blessing. We're looking for an excuse to talk about somebody. Or to see what so and so is wearing. I guess I'm a so and so. I wear blue jeans. I love blue jeans. Don't have no dress pants that I know of. My wife may have snuck off and bought me some. I don't know. I wore a suit, tie in the military. I said, Lord, if I ever get out of the military, I'm not wearing a suit and tie. I lied about that because they've been a time or two I've had to wear them. And if God convicted me for coming up here to speak the way I'm dressed and I didn't do something about it, oh me, I'm sinning. That's a sin to me. Would you not agree? If God lays it on your heart and tells you don't do that and you do it anyway, it is a sin. It's one of what? The seven deadly sins. Probably the worst sin you can do because you're disobeying God. Anytime you disobey God and you don't do what God tells you to do, there's consequences. And trust me, we all have a fleshly body. 
Everybody sometimes lives in the flesh. The Bible says we're not supposed to live in the flesh. When we got saved, we become a new creature. But it also says it's hard. Because once you start living in the flesh, it'll take you further than you want to go. And it'll cause you to sin. And it'll keep you there longer than you want to be. And the next thing you know, you're dead. And you're at the pearly gates. And guess what's fixing to happen now? The judgment. You're going to be judged. But I'm a Christian. I went to church. I paid my tithes. I visited the old people. I went to the hospital. I done all these things. What was the last thing you done? Who was the last person you blessed? Can you remember? I've been up here several times and spoke. I'm not a preacher. Never said I was a preacher. Don't want to be a preacher. Don't want to be a preacher. But I think as a deacon of this church, that on Wednesday night, to help whoever the preacher is, or whoever the speaker is, or whatever, I should be here, and I should speak when they ask me to. But if I come to speak, I need to speak what the Word of God says. I need to leave Tommy Spikes, his flesh, out there in the parking lot. Because my flesh has no place behind this pulpit. None whatsoever. And when you go to living in the flesh, you will sin. Guaranteed. The Lord says we're supposed to live in the Spirit. That's why He sent His Spirit. That's why He sent the Holy Ghost. So we'd have somebody living inside us so that when them fleshly things come up, we could recognize them and we could ask God to forgive us for them and He would give us the strength to get through them. He didn't say there wouldn't be trials and tribulations. He didn't say there wouldn't be trouble. He said, when it comes, don't you worry. I'll get you through it. I'll be there with you. I will never leave you or I will never forsake you. Some of my darkest times in my life, He was there. Some of the greatest times of my life, He was there. But you know what? In them dark times, I've done like a lot of other people in this world does. Lord, where you at? What am I going to do? I, I don't know what to do. You, you've abandoned me. I, 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 I just don't know where to go or what to say. But He always, always will make a way for you to get out and escape Satan's temptation. Always. He didn't say sometimes I will. He said always. And he said I will always be there for you. I will never leave you or forsake you. So if we believe every word that's in the Bible, which we should, and we live... 100% by the Bible, which by the way, I don't know anybody that does. Anybody says he has walked the narrow road and lived strictly by this word since he got saved, he probably needs to be at a prayer altar somewhere. He needs to be praying. He needs to be on his knees. I don't know how many times we've had awesome messages from different people. And they always say that the altars are always open. Altars are always open. But how many do you ever really see come up here? Hmm? When's the last time you kneeled down at an altar of prayer and had a talk with the Lord and just confessed to Him and told Him, I'm not right, Lord. I've got issues in my life. I need you to help me get through them. Help me deal with them so I can be a better servant to you. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about a man that saved my soul. Is that who you are? When you go to Walmart and you see somebody you know and they say, I really need you to be praying for me. Do you stop right then and pray for them? Oh, me, sometimes I don't. But I'd be careful if you ask me to pray for you. I don't care where you're at. I'm liable to pray for you right then. 
And most of you know, I get excited, I get loud. Not because I'm angry, not because I'm mad, not because I'm upset. I get excited. My heart goes to beating a little faster, and I get loud. Been like that all my life. I'm not, I'm not making excuses for it. I'm sure Brother Jimmy Brantley and some of the others will tell you, I get that way sometimes in the deacons meeting. Because I'm very passionate about the Word of God. Very passionate. There's none other. You cannot get to heaven unless you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ask Him to forgive you your sins, but before you ask Him to forgive you of your sins, you got to confess your sins. You don't have to confess your sins to me. You might ask me for forgiveness, and I'll tell you if I forgive you or not. It has been said, well, you don't know how to forgive nobody. You don't forgive. Not my place to judge who forgives and who don't forgive. And if you think it's your place to judge who has forgiven somebody and who hasn't, maybe you need to be at an altar of prayer. Don't have to be this one. It can be beside your bed. It can be in your living room. God's not limited to this building. And all this is is a building. This building don't mean nothing. When that tornado come through here and messed everything up, didn't mean nothing. You know why? God made provision for it to be fixed back. And it'd be fixed back better than what it was. Because when it come through, it showed things that they didn't know the first time. Right? The church is in here. 90% of your tithers, your workers, and the people that are truly wanting to be saved and go to heaven comes on Sunday night and Wednesday night. You can fill this place up on Sunday morning, especially Easter, Christmas, sometimes Mother's Day. But sometimes on Mother's Day, the kids won't even come to be with their mother at church. You know why? Satan has got this world wrapped around his finger, he thinks. Okay? Not my battle. Not my war. He's already been defeated. I don't have to worry about him. He can attack me all he wants to. If you put on the whole armor of God, you've got something to defend yourself. Right? Let's face it. We all should get up every morning and put on the whole armor of God. Do we all do that? Probably not. I know I don't. I try to get up every morning and listen to uh, a couple of preachers that I like. Adrian Rogers is one of them. I listen to him quite a bit. Billy Graham's another one. Listen to him quite a bit. I love Billy Graham. A true man of God. I watched the interview he done, and somebody asked him a question about sinning or being caught in the wrong situation. You know what his comment was? He said, let me explain something to you. If I go to get on the elevator and there's nobody on that elevator but one woman, I won't get on the elevator. The guy said, why? He said, I'm supposed to shun the pure appearance of evil. If I get on that elevator with that woman and we go up, somebody will see us and somebody may say, I seen Billy Graham on the elevator with a woman that wasn't his wife. He said, I'm not going to be caught in that position. You got to really respect a man of God like that, don't you? Because let's face it, we fight a battle. But the people that actually stand behind this pulpit, most of the time, they fight one worse than we do. Because if they're truly men of God, and they're called by God, and they're doing what God told them to do, and they're trying to live their life 100% for God, Satan's going to attack them. And he comes at them in a lot of different ways. He's attacked me all day long. All day long. My wife has been giving me scriptures, Unreal. Let me show you what I read. 
And I'll tell you what I told her. I will say what God gives me to say. When He tells me to shut up and sit down, then I'll shut up and sit down. But I'm here to tell you now, you have a Savior. He is the only one that can save you. If you're living in the flesh, or you allow the flesh to get it inside your little mind or heart, and you stray just a little bit, He'll forgive you. He said He would forgive you. But you've got to ask Him to. And if you're too far into the flesh, you, don't, you won't realize you've sinned until it's gone too far. And then what are you going to do? Can it go too far? Do you believe once saved, always saved? I tell you, I used to. I was raised a Baptist. Then I started going to a, a Pentecostal church. So people ask me nowadays what kind of church I go to or what kind of Christian I am or whatever you want to call it. I said, I'm a Bible-costal. I believe in some of what the Baptist says right. I believe some of what the Pentecostal says right. I believe some of what the Methodist says right. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go by this. Because if I go by that, I'm right. 110%. Don't get no better than this. Any problem we face in life, He gave you what to do right here. You have a road map. He didn't mix words about it. You know, some people say, oh, I don't believe in the Bible. There's too many contradictions in the Bible. The Bible tells lies. Can't get none of them to show it to me. I've had a few say it that. Never could get them to show me in the Bible. I said, give me the Scripture. Tell me. Show me. I'm not from Missouri, but if you're going to talk about my God in a negative sense, you got to show me. Because I'm a warrior. I'm a soldier of Jesus Christ. He hung on a cross. Bleeding. Beaten beyond recognition. Couldn't breathe. His mouth had done got dry. Needed something to drink. And they give him vinegar on a sponge. And what was the last thing he said besides he told the thief on the right side of him, today you'll be with me in paradise? When he was giving the other guy a hard time for bashing Jesus because he knew Jesus hadn't done nothing wrong, what was the last thing he, what was the last thing he said? Father, forgive them. Didn't he? For they know not what they do. And he gave up the ghost. And the minute he gave up the ghost, what happened? The curtain in the temple writ, top to bottom. They buried him. Satan, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Romans, everybody that helped put him there, even us, because he died for past sins, present sins, and future sins. He didn't die just for that bunch there. He died for everybody. They thought they had him done in. Put him in that tomb. Put a rock up there. Sealed it up. Put Roman guards around it. Because they were scared they would steal the body. The lurk trait come along. Moved the rock out of the way. And he wasn't there. He was already risen. He had already been to hell, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan. He was a risen Lord. Is your Lord risen today? Does He reign inside you? Are you allowing Him to direct your path? If you are, then you're on the road to heaven. If you're not, you're on the road to hell. 
Lord, I thank you for your love, your mercy, and your saving grace, Father God. I just pray, Father God, you would bless each one that's here tonight. If they one that needs to come and take time to speak to you and to get your guidance in their life, I pray, Father God, you would give them that chance. And I pray, Father God, if they decide not to do it tonight, you would give them one more chance. If there's one that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, Father God, I'm praying and believing that you're going to save them before it's eternally too late. Because we're not promised the next breath, let alone tomorrow. I just give you the praise, the glory and honor, Father God, for all that you've done for me, all that you're doing in my life, and all that you're going to do in my life. And I just pray you would bless this church. I pray, Father God, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to fill this church in such a way every time the doors are open that Satan and his demons and hell cannot stand against it. They have to leave. And I just give you the praise for all things. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen.